A former heart surgeon in Edmonton was at the Lloydminster Rotary Club this morning. Dennis Modry was in Lloyd to talk about his initiative, the Alberta Prosperity Project. After founding the project in 2022, Dennis stepped down as CEO, but continues to travel across Alberta to inform Alberta, Albertans on Alberta's current economic situation. To empower the provincial government to restructure Alberta's relationship in Canada, to resolve some of the concerns that many Albertans have and people in other areas of the country as well. According to a poll conducted by the Alberta Prosperity Project, 73% of Albertans are upset with the federal government's economic decisions. So the question is, is how do you deal with these things? Well, the only way you can deal with these things is if you can empower the provincial government to negotiate for the first time in 118 years from a position of strength. And that's what we're aiming to do. For more information on how you can become involved, visit albertaprosperityproject.com. It's time now for our weekly look into the past in this week's edition of Retrospect. With students heading back to school soon, we turn things back to 1994 as Lloydminster Catholic Schools sees an increase in enrollment. The numbers speak for themselves. In 1992, 1,267 students were enrolled in the Lloydminster Catholic School Division. Last year, the number jumped to 1,343, and this year has increased to over 1,400 students. Students are coming to our system, and uh, particularly kindergarten, I know that we're at the highest kindergarten ever, ever, and it's in excess now of 140 students, which is a, a lot. It does have implications. It has implications on staffing. It has implications on room, because our school division is completely filled as of this morning. With the influx of students in recent years, the impact is being felt and will continue to be felt as enrollment is projected to reach 1,600 in the next five years. So plans to curb the problem are already in the works. What our plan is is to is to have a new school, a new elementary school in, in Lloydminster, and uh, to change <clears throat> the configuration of our system and make, uh, at, at the moment, we are a K to seven and an eight to 12 system. And we're thinking that uh, in order to save <clears throat> the room at Holder Rosary, we would make that a nine to 12 school, which would mean 100 fewer students immediately. The potential of a new school remains with the Saskatchewan government. It's been agreed to in principle. Now it's a matter of funding that's expected to come from provincial infrastructure money, and according to school officials, hopefully soon. We are on a list, and we're on a list of priorities, and we're quite a high priority because of our pressure. It's almost, it, it's, with the Catholic, Catholic, it's almost like everything's a, an emergency. Like we need those buildings now. You know, we need, we need the classrooms today. The need of extra classrooms is already being felt as Father Gorman and St. Joseph's are using portables as classrooms this for the time being, but Father Gorman will be expanding in the next two weeks. The uh, school was uh, originally built with the idea of having far fewer students enrolled and, and right now we are, we are full and we're looking for space. Uh, we're housing two classrooms, grades one and two, right now in uh, a trailer and they will move into the new facility hopefully in uh, uh, the new year. December 25th is a projected completion date at Father Gorman's school and it would be a nice Christmas present, but with the enrollment continuing to grow, the ideal Christmas present would be a new school. And in 1998, work is underway on a new grain terminal west of Vermilion. Something big is on the horizon along Highway 16, only 15 kilometers east of Vegarville. A new AgPro elevator is in the construction stages. One of six new concrete grain terminals being built in Alberta, it's a subsidiary of the Saskatchewan Wheat Pool. The $270 million construction project will include both grain handling facilities and a farm supply service centre. We think that uh, the future, in the next century, movement of grain is going to change uh, uh, the whole livestock industry is changing. How we meet needs and how we meet our export needs are, are again going to change. And with that, we're meaning uh, we'll have the ability to hit some uh, direct hits right into boats. Uh, we'll be able to go into that pool market, the, 
of uh, meeting needs of uh, our mar marketing people around the world uh, at short notice. AgPro Grain will also offer condo grain storage. Producers can lease the units with a capacity equivalent to 4,000 bushels of spring wheat. Uh, we're looking at the ability to have a farmer uh, have producer lease storage here. Uh, that will be able, he'll be able to use that at any time he wants, as many times as he wants in a year. It's his, a one-time cost up front. Uh, information can be uh, gotten from any of, the, any of our locations across Alberta and uh, we encourage producers to uh, inquire. We will be doing some meetings here in the near future around areas to, to explain exactly the benefits of the, the whole condo program. It is a one-time cost. Uh, we look after everything else from there and, and we believe producers uh, will and should take advantage of it. The Lavoie Grain Terminal just completed its concrete pour. This was a continuous pour lasting six days. They made good time too, averaging a foot in an hour, but it takes many workers to move that fast. Right now there's 61 people on the, on the deck actually up on the elevator. There's quite a group more at the concrete plant and doing the testing and so on. Total storage capacity of the condos will be 42,000 tons. The Lavoie terminal will also clean grain and a spot of 104 rail cars loading on four tracks. It's easy to see why the people involved are anticipating the end product. Well, I, I guess uh, as far as AgPro in Alberta, we're, uh, we're looking very much of getting into the market here. We think that uh, we can be uh, successful if people give us a chance to uh, prove what we can do for them. And uh, again, uh, we hope that uh, we can uh, do some business in the very near future with people. So you're definitely looking forward to the future then? You bet. The future is where it's at. Almost all 60 people working to build the structure are local. And when completed, this egg program terminal will employ 20 full-time people. It's expected to be in full operation by the spring of 1999. And that's it for this week in Retrospect. Retrospect this week is brought to you by Webbs Ford. Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webbs Ford in Vermilion. A group that is familiar to Lloyd Minster is returning next month as the entertainment for the Border Town Hog Group Toy Run. Stacy Comer caught up with one of the Hillside Outlaws to talk about the upcoming gig. Well, I have a special guest with me today on Primetime Local News. Louis Bigra from the Hillside Outlaws is here with me. Louis, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Stacey. Well, you guys are going to be coming to Lloydminster here in September to play at a very special event. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the Hillside Outlaws. Tell me about the band. Well, we've uh, we've been making music since 2018. Um, we put our first album out and our first single out in 2018, and uh, we've kind of been going ever since. Uh, we we're all from the Okanagan Valley here in uh, beautiful British Columbia, and uh, we just we we got together through our love of country music. Now you have a single out right now. The latest single that you have out, uh, it's called "Didn't Have Dirt." Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, Didn't Have Dirt was, uh, it, it was a song that we wrote down in Nashville earlier this year. Um, our producer, Jeff Johnson, and I went to Nashville for a couple of weeks. And uh, this was the last song on the last day that we were writing. And, you know, we were all, we were, we were quite tired from the trip. And we were just kind of in the motion, wanting to get out of there. And uh, we didn't realize what the song was while we were writing it, we didn't realize until the next day when we were heading to the airport, we put it on, we put the uh, the work tape on, just that, you know, uh, a, a rough draft with uh, a, an acoustic guitar and, and some vocals. And uh, we started listening to it and, and um, that's when we realized how special it was. We knew it was gonna be the next single. So what have you been uh, doing throughout the, the summer? What has the group been doing? Have you had quite a few gigs? Are you writing music or kind of a little bit of everything? Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a whirlwind because uh, we 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 signed a record deal er, uh, earlier this year, and that's been you know kind of months in the making. We we uh, we met Rob, the head of the label, um, at the last CCMAs in Calgary, and so that's that was kind of brewing. Um, we also signed with our booking agent um, earlier this year as well, and uh, kind of went into the year with not a whole lot of shows. Um, but then 
all of a sudden kind of last minute we started getting all of these shows so it's just been a whirlwind of of playing live shows uh, writing new music um and kind of figuring out what the next one is going to be after didn't have dirt so it's been a very busy summer um in the best possible way well, and as part of that summer, we get to hear you guys play out here in Lloydminster, September 9th, as part of the Border Town Hog Chapter Toy Run. So tell me how this all came about, uh, getting you guys to come out to Lloydminster. Yeah, this is uh, something that, that came about through our, our booking agent, Carla. Um, she had some relationships with uh, with the, the program and uh, with some of the people that are, that are programming the music. And... Uh, we were actually just in Lloydminster um, a week or two ago playing at the, uh, the truck wagon races. And um, so we're going to be on this little writing tour uh, headed towards the CCMAs with Tommy Charles and Amy Nelson. And uh, this opportunity came to play at the Toy Run and we just, we, we had to do it. We had to come and play. It's such a great cause, um, such a great event. And Tommy and Amy are, are both great artists. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, heading into uh, the fall after you, you do the gig here in Lloydminster, uh, do you guys have some some dates set up uh, for the fall as well? Or are you just kind of working on that at this point? Uh, right right now, we're, we're going to the CCMAs, which are in Hamilton. That's the Country Music Awards here in Canada. And uh, we do have some shows uh, along the way. Uh, before we come to Lloydminster, we're going to be in Regina and uh, Regina and Saskatoon. Then we're coming to Lloydminster, and then we're going back east uh, to do a show in Winnipeg and a couple shows in Ontario, leading up to those CCMAs. Well, so it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's it's great that you guys are busy, and and the new single is fantastic <laughs> as well. If you are uh, or people are looking to hear it or to learn more about the Hillside Outlaws, what's the best way to track you guys down? Um. I like to spend a lot of my time on Instagram. So if, if you uh, if you feel like reaching out, uh, that's the best place to find me. Shoot us a DM. Um, our music is out everywhere. It's on Spotify. It's on iTunes, YouTube, all of those places that you find your music. Um, but yeah, I, I would love it if you just come and say hi to me on Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you here September 9th in Lloydminster playing uh, in the evening. The Dine and Dance is part of the Border Town Hog Toy Run. We can't wait to have you guys back in the city. Thanks so much for joining me today. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. With back to school around the corner, Border Paws Animal Shelter is holding a raffle where one lucky person will win school supplies and more. Our Abby St. John has more. I'm joined here today by Nikki Hayden from Border Paws Animal Shelter, a day early from Pet Project, but they have an event that is uh, coming to a close on the 31st. Uh, it's the back to school raffle. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, I bet to be here. <laughs> Thanks for asking us to come on. Of course. So you have a back to school raffle and the last day to get tickets is the 31st. So tell me a little bit about what this raffle is and, you know, the prizes that are involved and what people should know about it. You bet. So we have got a back to school raffle going on. There's a whole bunch of prizes in there. It's worth over $200. Um, it comes with like, we've got markers, crayons, scissors, everything you can think of for back to school. There's a really nice backpack that is Under Armour actually. Um, there's a bento box, one of those ones that allows you to like organize your lunch so that you can be packing veggies and fruits and stuff like that makes it easier to have a healthy lunch um there's a water bottle there's like so much in it and even like a 50 dollar gift card to staples is in there as well um tickets are only five bucks or you can get three for ten dollars um so it's a really good deal and it's on till this thursday the 31st that sounds incredible and those prizes will really help whoever wins kind of mm -hmm. cut down the cost of school supplies because it is a lot. And, you know, I remember when I was back in school, we had this ginormous long list of things that we needed to purchase. So exactly. this will definitely help those who win uh, kind of cut down the cost and also great prizes. The Under Armour is a great brand for backpacks and bento boxes are very becoming very, very popular these days yeah. all over social media. So that's awesome. Uh, so it is the, the last day to get tickets is the 31st. How can people find tickets or where can they go to purchase them? 
So if you go onto Facebook, you can follow our post on there or just go to LloydminsterSPCA.com and right on our main page, there is a link. And if you just scroll down a little bit, um, it shows a picture of everything you're getting and it says get tickets here and you can just click. So it's really simple. Um, but yeah, it's it's really cheap for what you're getting and you're supporting a great cause. All the money raised is going to go towards the care of our animals. Um, so it's a really great thing to be entering and you're going to get some great prizes out of it and I mean it's easy to share if you want to share it with your friends on Facebook too and get the word out for us yes for sure um and that answered my next question of where the proceeds would be going towards which is awesome um and definitely important especially since you guys have been full for the last while um so that this will definitely go a long way uh so with the last day being the 31st is that when you are going to draw uh, the winner or when do you guys plan on uh, drawing the name and then contacting the winner? Yes. So our draw date is going to be this Thursday. So you've got to get it in, um, buy your tickets before Thursday or by the end of the day on Thursday. And then we'll be announcing our winner then when we do the draw. Awesome. Now, is there anything else that you'd like to add that I may have missed in regards to this raffle? I don't think so. I, I that pretty much covers it. But yeah, it's a really great package. Um, there's so much in there. And like you said, like school supplies are not cheap and prices keep going up for everything. So to be able to potentially get that package for only five or ten dollars is like amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully uh, you sell a lot of tickets and raise a lot of money. And um, this will definitely, like you said, help uh, whoever wins. It'll go a long way in uh, getting, you know, cutting the cost of school supplies. So thank you for joining me. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for helping us get the word out. That's all we have for news. Sports is up next. But first, here's a look at your closing market. Today's oil prices are brought to you by First General Services. The Lloydminster Bobcats finished their main training camp with a media game where it was Team Meridian Source versus Team PTLN. With more on the game, here's our own Thomas Wildman. The final inter-squad training camp game for the Bobcats with guest coaches Taylor Weaver and Corey Harvey for Team Meridian Source were taking on Team PTLN with myself behind the bench. Your artists play your best and I'm sure you all be great players one day. <laughs> Team PTLN got the lone goal midway through the first but ran into some penalty troubles in the second allowing Meridian Source to tie it up. Then Meridian Source came out strong in the third period taking the lead on two separate occasions but PTLN battled back and tied it up at three. Overtime solved nothing, so a shootout was required. The first shooters for both teams were unsuccessful, and Meridian Source was unsuccessful in round two. But Cade Fondelay for Team PTLN snuck one through the five hole to put the pressure on. Remy Spooner kept it going with some dirty dangles, but then Hunter LaRousse then finished it off, resulting in a shootout primetime local news victory. Though the Meridian Source coaches had an awesome time as well. It was a blast. Uh, I'm glad the Bobcats brought this back because uh, they couldn't do it during COVID. And uh, as I talked to you before the game, we were technically the, the defending champ. So I was hoping we could pull it off again. But I guess uh, Orange was the stronger squad today. And uh, But it was great. We had a lot of blast, uh, a lot of fun in the, uh, on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, the boys, they played hard. It was a good close game. Um, I think they're all fairly exhausted from the camp this week and uh, but it was it was great great to be here and and thanks to the Bobcats. For primetime local news I'm Thomas Wildman and we are number one and the champions. Now let's take a look at your agriculture prices. <laughs> Let's look 
look at your seven day forecast for Lloyd Minster and some very, very warm weather tomorrow, seeing a high of 31. That is gonna be all of the 30s that we're gonna be seeing for the week. However, we're gonna be seeing a 29 Wednesday and sunny skies for the week.